So this is the student instruction video for vapor pressure of the heat vaporization of liquids from the general chemistry lab manual. So this lab concerns itself with the transition between phases. So boiling, in this case, boiling from liquid to gas. And you know, you, you know that um, the, as you do this transition, you've seen the uh, phase diagrams with uh, the line between sort of the liquid and the gas phase. And you can realize it's generally that the way that phase transition happens is regulated by three components. One is the temperature, which is the obvious one. You heat it up, it's more likely to be in the gas phase. Um, pressure is also another component. Um, uh, and then finally, the amount of energy it takes to actually occur, to actually uh, uh, execute the, the phase change. So what we'll call the enthalpy of vaporization if you're boiling. Okay, and so <clears throat> we're gonna do a lab where we're gonna study this. And we're gonna actually see how temperature and pressure can be used then to calculate the enthalpy of vaporization using an equation that you're not really probably going to use in general chemistry, uh, but it's still a useful experimental thing to see the relationship, and that is what we call the Clapeyron equation. So here's the Clapeyron equation. Natural log of P uh, equals minus delta H vaporization divided by the gas constant. So that's the 8.314 gas constant, the one that relates joules uh, to uh, Kelvin. And then we're going to divide that by the temperature. So as you look, you then have a, a linear line that if you determine the vapor pressure at various temperatures, you can then plot that using the Clapeyron equation that allow you to determine then the enthalpy of vaporization. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing today. And then once we determine that, we can also use this graph to then predict what the boiling point should be because the vapor pressure at the boiling point should be equal then to the atmospheric pressure. So you can plug in atmospheric pressure into P and solve for T once you get the equation and you'll be able to compare that then to the real boiling point to see how accurate you might be. So this lab has a little bit of a, a specialized equipment. It's, it's simple, but it's still specialized. It's going to be a sealed uh, pipette that's got uh, measurements on the side of it. So we're going to fill that with a known liquid. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to in, in, inject uh, exactly 0 0.20 milliliters or so, 200 microliters of bubble of air into the top of it. Okay, so then it'll be upside down, so the bubble will be trapped uh, under the liquid. And so the volume of the bubble then um, is equal to the barometric pressure, which is what it's pushing outside, times whatever vapor pressure uh, from the liquid when it's evaporated into that headspace. So the air will be 200 microliters, but it's actually going to be bigger than 200 microliters when you look at it because some of that liquid is going to evaporate into the gas phase. And so that will push that bubble a little bit bigger. So then what you're going to do is you're going to put this device into the liquid and you're going to heat the liquid. Okay, so what will happen then is as that temperature increases, more of that gas will go into the gas phase. Um, and so you'll get a bubble that will increase. Now it will also increase because you're increasing the temperature. And you know from the ideal gas law that if you increase temperature, you also increase the volume. So you put these two things together and you can figure out then how much of the vapor pressure is um, uh, what the vapor pressure of this thing is at various temperatures. And we'll go through the calculations. This calculation is fairly complicated. There's a post-lab video to the calculation. So you're going to do this at five different temperatures, and then you're going to uh, do in the calculations, as, as we'll talk about in the post line video, you'll plot this, you'll get a slope of the line, and then you'll also need to measure the boiling point uh, of the liquid. So that's a separate experiment. So that's after you get everything done. You'll need to figure out what the boiling point is. So in terms of objectives, uh, this is a really quantitative lab, uh, lots of calculations. It's really to emphasize the importance of vapor pressure and temperature, um, and also the, the question of thermodynamics of phase change, because I think that's something as you do, especially like these water, ice, steam problems, these are things that you're going to have to do. So, so that we'll also do a lot of graphing and things like that. Now, compared to the lab manual, it's fairly uh, identical. Um, we're going to be using a hot plate instead of a Bunsen burner. Some of these things are flammable, so I'd rather use a hot plate. Uh, we don't have a magnetic stirrer, so you're going to have to uh, add that heat at the same time. So you're going to have to sort of stir it. And then we're going to get rid of a couple of liquids. We're only going to do three, isopropanol, ethanol, and water. This is a lab you'll be able to do in pairs. Um, I will tell you we're going to spill some solvent. Ethanol, rubbing alcohol, and then water are not really the worst things. Um, and then also I'm going to be adding the bubble. And so you are going to spill some solvent. Okay, so some of these things are flammable, so we want to keep away open flame, which is why we don't want to use the Bunsen burner. So this is the device. So you can see it's got a closed end and it's got 10th mil gradations. Now, we're going to weigh this. Now, you want to have the 
sides up on this, of course. So you're going to weigh the, the pipette, and then you're going to add some solvent. Now we're going to modify our droppers because some of these holes are pretty small. So we're going to pull them a little bit so they're a little skinnier. And so we'll fill that up. And then I will, and then we're going to mask that again. Now make sure you have the sides up again. I, I took a shortcut here. I was cleaning the balance when I was doing this. So I don't have the sides up. You definitely want the windshields on for this one. Okay, and so then I will come by with my syringe and I will add the 200 microliters of air. Okay, now it's going to be trapped but pretty much, but you want to make sure that that bubble doesn't all of a sudden pop up. So you do need to top it off with some liquid. Okay, so, so there will be a little bit of liquid at the top that I displaced that's not in the bubble. So you just top that off with a little bit of, of uh, water and then we're going to mask that <coughs> one more time. Now, for most of these solvents, they have enough surface tension that we should be able to um, keep it upright um, and the bubble will still stay trapped, but you want to be a little careful there. And then finally, we're going to have our device. So we will uh, stick that in upside down. You'll heat the water. You'll need to get about five different temperatures. Um, typically, I think they're between somewhere between 25 and about 60 is good. And then... You know, at the end, then finally, we want to boil our liquid. You want to have a thermometer sort of above it um, where you can measure the boiling point. Um, you want to wait till it comes to a stable temperature. Uh, and you would really like it not to be in the liquid. So we have some stoppers that might make life a little bit easier in terms of keeping it above uh, the water level, the liquid level there. Right. So when you're done, you should have basically this set of numbers. You have the atmospheric pressure, which you should be able to measure in the classroom barometer. If you need help, I can help you with that. You'll have the mass of the pipette and the liquid before you add the bubble. You'll have the mass of the pipette and the liquid after you add the bubble. And then we'll do some calculations again that we'll talk about in the post-lab video uh, to figure out then what the uh, bubble size is. And then finally, the uh, we're going to have this measurement of the meniscus, the volume measurement, uh, to the nearest uh, hundredth of a milliliter, so 0 0.01 milliliters you should be able to estimate, um, and do that at five different temperatures. And then finally, uh, we need the boiling point of the liquid, so uh, which you'll measure afterwards. So these measurements should cover a range where, um, you know, you go from sort of the, you have almost the whole thing as a bubble um, compared to uh, some of, to something where it's just at the beginning. So we should have a range of temperatures that will make it the, the most accurate calculation we can have. And then again, you can watch the video on how uh, to do the, the post lab. It's also described in the lab manual, but um, I think the lab manual is a little bit short on this part. So uh, please watch that sort of after you've already got these measurements.